Okay, so I'm going to walk you through how quick and easy it is to set up your Euro Home 6550 laser with light burn. Um, I have uh, reset my machine back to default. All the settings are uh, back to default, and I'm going to walk you through how easy it is to install it. So let's first get started with the drivers that came with your machine they are on the USB device or you can download them from the your home website and we'll just take you through steps so put in your USB device and you should get the driver screen when you do or you see the driver uh, double click on the driver and then a window pop up click yes that we want to trust it and then we're going to just click install so give it a second and note that the driver is called CH350. Okay, so it is done installing. Click OK and then close this window. And now go ahead and plug in your uh, USB or your laser to the USB. And down here you might see a thing saying that it's setting up and installing and so forth and it'll say installing. Mine is currently already plugged in. Um, so when that's complete, which it should be done already if you did it. Um, when that is complete, we will move forward to the next thing. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna move this out of the way and let's go ahead and load up Lightburn. You're, and definitely don't like load up Lightburn until your driver says it's done installing here. So let's load Lightburn. And you will get a, you know, your first pop-up given your usage notes and stuff like that. And the first thing you have to do is install your device. So click OK, and then when you come here, all you need to do is choose Find My Laser. So click Find My Laser, and it's saying it will attempt. And again, make sure your uh, your laser is connected USB, and we did already install the drivers. So we will click Next, and it is going to attempt to find your device. So it found mine. Uh, the device is a, a GRBL and it is at COM7. So note the COM7 because we're going to need that in a minute. We need to know where you're plugging it. If you did not find it, then I would suggest backing up out of this screen. You can just click cancel. Um, make sure your device is plugged in. Make sure you have the power onto it. Um, it does not need to be turned on. It just needs to be plugged into USB. Uh, so um, if it does find it, so then we're going to click Add Device. And um, the origin that I use and I recommend is from the bottom left. And then leave this turned off. And then click Next. And then these are your basic summary for it. Click Finish. Uh, now, me personally, I like to click here and then go to Edit. And then click Next. And then click next and then rename it to the 6550 preference and then click next from the bottom left again and next and finish so now we have our 6550 and this is good if you have more than one machine as well and then click OK so now that we're here the first thing that you need to do is to come down here and you have devices and you want to drop this down and choose the COM port remember mine was on COM7 so I'm going to choose COM7. And you notice here it says, now it says ready. So it said disconnected a minute ago. And to be just double sure that we are connected, if you come to devices and you right click, you're going to notice this is going to disconnect. And if it comes back to ready, then it is physically connected and reading from my laser. So I'm going to right click on devices. Notice disconnected and now it's ready. So now I know it is connected to my machine. So let me move this over now so you can see here. Sorry if you can see that. Device is seven. So the first thing I want to do is let's go up to edit and let's just go right through the settings. We'll go to settings. And um, I would recommend uh, leaving beginner mode off. It's not that urgent, but I would recommend leaving it off. Um, most of these settings are going to be default. I would recommend again going over and you can learn them from the from the Lightburn website, you know, get educated 
with the software, um, its features and the things that you can do. One of the main things um, here on this screen is, is for the 6550, it's not a CO2 laser, it's a diode laser. So make sure you're selected over here. Um, some people like to do millimeters. I preference uh, inches, so I choose my inches, um, and you can leave it millimeters if you want to. Uh, most everything else is pretty much at this point, we're going to leave default. Um, that's actually not true. So see your grid spacing here? I changed mine to inches. So a lot of my work I do is by inches or by half inches, however your choice. So my visual spacing grid, I'm gonna change to one inch because I like my, my, um, my grid here to be on one inch basis. And I'll show you that in a second. Down the file settings, I actually have not changed anything. There is um, pretty much most of this, again, is all preference of what you wanna do. I don't really import DFX files, but you know, again, educate yourself on what the features are on that, about auto saving options and so forth. So at this point, we're gonna click okay. And that's it for settings. Notice my grid now is by, by one inch squares. And again, if you go up to tools, settings you want let's just say we want to make it half inch you go 0.5 click ok and that's done so that's pretty much it for that so the next thing we want to go to is go back up to edit and then we're going to go to device settings now here's a couple different things we're going to change again nothing really major the first thing we're going to do is want to put in our width and the height of our working size the Eurohome 6550 is 26 inches by 20 inches high. Whoop. Let's take that off. Yeah, 26 by 20 high. My um, origin is bottom left. I most always work from the bottom left. And um, one of the other things you're going to want to do is enable your fire or your laser fire button. And I'll show you why in a minute. And we're going to use that to make sure that our machine is working. So we're going to turn that on and pretty much everything else we can leave. There's other settings on here that you really want to look into. Make sure your um, your S value is uh, 1000. Everything should be default like this. So G code, there's nothing here. This is all for custom stuff later on. Additional settings. One thing that I do is click read from controller and these should change. If that's why we changed down here and turned on the COM port so that it can read from our controller. So these are our simulation settings and this just kind of tells us what the board, the, um, the, the, the circuit board, what it has in it and we basically just pulled it all into the software so it knows exactly what we're working with. So again, we'll click OK and that's all we need to do from there. Now, um, let's just go ahead to one more thing, machine settings. And most of this is default, again, except you want to make sure laser mode enable is true. It's really important. It needs to be on. And then click OK. So if you go to move, you'll notice here you probably do not have the fire button. So what we need to do now is close the software, give it a second, and then reopen the software. When you reopen it, we come back. You should now have your fire button here. So you'll notice now we have half inch grid um, instead of one. And so this is pretty much mostly, you should be good to go. So what we're gonna do first is we're just simply gonna test. Right now you should be ready to go, but let's do a couple tests. So go ahead and turn on your laser. We're gonna hit the power button and you should hear your fans come on. If you do not hear your fans come on, just real quick, I want to show you, let's see, page 33, I think it is. You got a extra power, um, power supply, I guess it is, for the laser. There is a power button on the, si or on the side of this laser that you need to make sure is on also. And mine happens to be, if you're looking at my machine, I did not mount mine here. I actually mounted mine in the front, but there is a power button on here. And if, it, if you don't see these fans come on, then make sure that power button is on. So right now everything's on, it doesn't really matter where it's at, just make sure you just pick a comfortable area that would maybe in the center where it's at. Again, make sure that all is on. Okay, so, all we have left now is come over to power, 
and let's change it to 1%. We just want 1%. That's it. And we're going to click fire. And you notice on my screen here, I'm going to actually make it larger for you now. You can see that. You notice my light came on and went off. So yours should as well. So when you click fire, you should see your light come on. You don't need to focus it or anything yet. All we're doing is just making sure it's installed. So once it's on, and we're only using 1% power, so we're not doing anything, we know that it is communicating. So go ahead and turn it back off. So the only next step that I would recommend would be to, let me minimize this down here, is to let's make sure that we have everything wired correctly. So my distance, change your distance to one. We're just gonna move one inch. That's all we're gonna do. Speed wise, let's just change it down to 100. And we are going to use the up, the right, the left, and the down to make sure. If you watch my laser, whoop, let me just bring it in. Um, I am going to click up, which is my Y, and I'm gonna move up one inch. If you notice my laser went up. If your laser did not go up, you know, Y going upward, then I would definitely stop right here and make sure that everything's wired correctly. I'm gonna move right on the X axis, I'm actually going to move back down on the y-axis and then I'm going to move left on the x-axis. So I know mine is working correctly. I was able to move one inch all the different directions. If yours does not move left, right, up, down like you want it to, then you need to make sure your wiring is correctly. One other last thing, and that's pretty much it, but one other last thing I want to show you is um, down here, so, so our position, we could get position the software thinks we are at our home position, which is our, our home origin, which is where it's at right now. So we could click set origin. So let's say we were going to burn right here, start here, whatever you want to do. Let's say we're going to start right here. That's where we would click set origin. What's really important is start from, you want to make sure that this is choose, chose on user origin because we want it to start from exactly where we clicked set, which is exactly where we're at and we want it to start from the bottom left down here. If you noticed here, the if you click in the center, you'll see the green dot. This is where the machine's gonna start from, but we wanna be bottom left, and then we can actually turn this on. Let me, let me zoom in down here. Let me come over here. We could turn show last position, and you'll see the plus, and that's where the software thinks our laser is at our um, user origin. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, how simple it is to get it set up with the um, 6550. There is uh, tons more settings to the software. It's an awesome software. You know, the uh, 6550 is an awesome machine. Um, these, I personally think Lightburn and the uh, 6550 is an incredible combo and you could do some really neat things with it. I would highly recommend going over to the Lightburn website, download the documentation, Educate yourself on all the different features and settings. Um, you can really make this uh, 6550 dance being creative and some of the stuff that, you know, that you'll be able to open your creativity with this software. So I hope that really helps. And um, again, any questions or big problems with the software, I would shoot over a Lightburn's website. And if you your uh, machine did not move like it was supposed to, I would definitely check your wiring and um, that's it. Have any other problems, contact support. And that's it. Have a great day. Hope this really helped. Jungle.